I get off and ask Patrick, what is the best blazer render mode for my application? Well, let's just have a look. As you can see here, Visual Studio 2022 it is. And let's just create a new project and check out the render modes one by one. But really regarding the question, what's the best one for my application? Not how they work in detail, but let's just say, for instance, this is not the Blazor app five, but this is now my Blazor block, let's say, all right? So we wanna create a simple block application that can get, of course, more complex, but at the beginning, it is rather simple. And for that, I suggest none. So in this case, it would just be not just, it would be static server-side rendering. So in essence, no interactivity, although you can still use forms, for instance, you can still use links and style them so they look like buttons. When you use that, no authentication, just interactive render mode, none, we create this thing. Then here you see regarding the, uh, the example application, what we got is, in particular, the weather razor file. And what you can do here, as you can see, simple HTML, C sharp, stuff like that, right? And also here, you can still fetch data from a database, right? So here it is simulated, but in the end, if you're using or building something similar to a blog, you want to grab your blog posts maybe from a database, right? So in this case, you have everything you need to use, for instance, Entity Framework or DAPA to access any database you want and then get the data. Let's just run this real quick. There we are, this is our homepage and this is now the weather page. And as you can see, we are fetching data. Again, it is simulated. There are more details into that. We go deeper into these details in other videos or in the Dotted Web Academy, for instance. But just so you know, if you wanna build something like a blog where you just want to fetch data from a database and show it to any user and maybe SEO, search engine optimization is important for you, then static server-side rendering, Blazor SSR is the right choice for you. One more example I wanna show you is this thing, the website, the landing page of the Dunham Web Academy completely done with Blazor SSR. There is no Blazor server, no WebAssembly, nothing like that is in here. And as you can see, we still have something like buttons, but in the end, these are just a tags, A elements, right? Anchor elements that uh, navigate to anything uh, you like, right? So that's that. Nothing else that I need here. So this totally works with Blazor static server side rendering. Now, if you want forms, you can still use them with Blazor SSR, but there are a bit easier, let's say now, when you use one of the interactive render modes, meaning server or WebAssembly. So let's have a look at them because as you can see here, maybe you're already used to the uh, default examples. You don't see the counter example here, right? But you will see it in the Blazor server example. Real quick, because I get this request from time to time, I am now offering workshops for companies. So if you have a small to mid-sized team of developers who wanna dive deep into .NET and build great web apps with Blazor, now's your chance. Check out the link in the video description below. So let's just create another Blazor web app. And this time it is our Blazor, uh, let's just call this server app, right? So in this case, Two. In this case, this is uh, using the Blazor server render mode. And with that, we have interactivity. And I suggest these kind of applications for apps that don't expect to have lots of load, meaning there are not lots of users accessing the page fetching data and so on. Because what you can see here, we still have the uh, weather example. It's in essence exactly the same as in the static server-side render example. You can also see this attribute here, stream rendering, right? Again, details in other videos. But just so you know, this still runs with static server-side rendering. But now we have the already mentioned counter example where you have a button. As you can see here, this is a button. And here we have this on click event. And this only works because we're using this server render mode. Let's run this real quick. And then you will see this in action. 
All right, there we are. We have the counter, the weather example as well. Again, still works as before. And in the counter now, I can click on this thing and we see something is happening, right? So interactivity it is. Just to show you real quick, if I would remove that here, okay, the render mode directive and save that, restart the application. There we are now, you see current count is zero. I click on this thing, nothing is happening. Thing is, under the hood, we're using SignalR or WebSockets. This means that every click is sent to the server. So everything the user is doing here, clicking on a button, entering or filling out a form, sending this form, this is done on the server. This means the server has all the loads and it is somehow, let's say, streaming the result to the user. This is still totally suitable for a block application or something like a block application where you also want an admin dashboard. So let's say uh, you have your blog where you display your articles. This is done with SSR, but as soon as you need some forms, you have to log someone in um, to be able to create new articles, for instance, probably that's just you or run or just a small team, then this is perfect because there are not lots and lots of users working with this application, right? It is done on the server. So the small team that's creating the articles, editing them can totally work with Blazor server. All right, this is Blazor server. Now, what about WebAssembly? Let's just create an example real quick. Again, a Blazor web app. Don't confuse it with Blazor WebAssembly standalone, please. This is something totally different. We are looking at the Blazor web app and this is now the Blazor WebAssembly app two again. <laughs> and here now we choose WebAssembly, not auto so far. This is also something different. Uses both render modes, but let's just focus on WebAssembly for now and also include the sample pages. And as you can see now, this is confusing at the beginning. What you have here are now two projects. This means we have components on the server, but also components or pages on the client. As you can see here, right? We have also the counter razor now on the client. Why is that? Well, we are using the WebAssembly render mode. Weather is still totally rendered on the server and then sent to the client. But here now for the user, the user wants to click this button, something should happen, but what is happening should be realized on the client, on the machine of the user, right? So let's run this again. There we are. Again, weather works exactly as before, but now counter what you can see when everything is loaded, see something had to be loaded, right? Also exactly the same behavior, right? Maybe it takes a second or so until you can click the button. But the important thing now is that this thing, the whole logic is executed on the client, on the machine of the user. So if you have a blog again, but with thousands of authors, let's say, then it might be a better idea to use WebAssembly because then the whole load logic for entering a form, changing stuff and so on, is done on the client. And another advantage is that it also works offline. You can build a PWA, progressive web app out of that, right? So stuff like that then would be possible. So in this case, if you have an application like that, a blog with many, many users that not only read, but also do something with this blog, like writing articles, or if you have a comment section and you don't use stuff like Discuss or something like a plugin, right? Or an external library that you want to include into your page, you want to use your comments inside your web application, then it might be better to use WebAssembly. Same with, I don't know, line of business applications with hundreds of users, stuff like that, then WebAssembly might be the better choice. Server can still be used also for line of business applications, again, for smaller teams like 10, 15, 20 users, maybe where not a lot of users do concurrent actions, maybe, and you have a good enough server, let's say. And now the auto render mode, you've seen that one already. Well, this thing now combines simply both. And there it is getting a bit more complicated again at the beginning. And I'm not sure if you really need it. 
in my opinion, when would you want to use the auto render modes is when you also have an application, let's say with lots of users, maybe. And what you want is that the first access to the page is still pretty fast. But then when the user comes back and uses this application again, it is also fast, but the load is on the client. Now what you see here with the auto render mode, again, we have a server project and also a client project. It looks pretty similar to the WebAssembly render mode. The only difference is that we are here using interactive auto. Now, when we run this, you wouldn't as a user wouldn't really see a difference, right? When the app is running, there it is now again, weather works as before, counter also works as before, even when we refresh the page, same result, right? But under the hood, when we check out the console here, then what you will see, let me first remove everything again, clear the site data, go back to the console. And now we are hard reloading. As you can see here now, we got a WebSocket here. So this is what's working now or what's uh, doing this interactivity now is the WebSocket connection. So exactly that thing that we are using or doing with Blazor server, but in the background, we downloaded something and this is the WebAssembly stuff, right? And when we now reload the page again without clearing the cache, everything is as before, we access the page and now we are accessing the page again with reloading, you see directly no WebSocket connection, but interactivity works with WebAssembly. So this is this little mix where you really have to decide, okay, what kind of application do I have? Do I really want to provide this extra step, this extra mile for the user that probably the first encounter with the with your web application is faster than using just WebAssembly? In my opinion, you can change that later if you want. If you think you have a page with lots of users, lots of load, then choose WebAssembly build it with WebAssembly. And when you then see that loading times are really long, then you have everything you need already configured to also use Blazor server or the auto render mode. All right. Yes, there are maybe more steps to implement stuff, but you can change it afterwards. Just think simple application like a blog where you only want to show users some data, static server side rendering. If you have interactivity like forms, for instance, that you want to build more convenient or more conveniently than Blazor server, but not lots of load on the server. So not lots of users that are using the interactivity, right? You can still use lots of, or have lots of readers in your blog, for instance, but not lots of users who are using the forms where we need the interactivity, then choose Blazor server. And then the other thing is when you have lots of interactivity, lots of users that are using your forms, for instance, the buttons, I don't know, stuff like that, interactive stuff, data grids, whatever it is, then use Blazor WebAssembly. All right, these are my two cents. I hope this helped. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you want to dive deeper, check out the .NET Web Academy. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.